So thanks for attending to this talk. And today I'm going to talk about a numerical approach uh, for finding the equilibrium in the Stackelberg new field games. So we are going to look at an application of uh, controlling the epidemic. This is a joint work with Alexander Ora, René Carmona, and Mathieu Lauria. We started this project on the first days of the pandemic, and at that point, basically, the governments were trying to decide which types of policies they should set in. For example, like they should, uh, uh, whether they should put mask mandates or whether they should put social distancing policies, etc. So, in this uh, case, our research question became: How can we optimally incentivize the individuals to make it a uh, to make the right effort in the fight against the epidemic. So this creates a policymaker's uh, problem for us, which means that we will need to find the optimal incentives to a population of uh, strategic agents, such that first the agents should accept and follow. So the second one is that that should yield a behavior that's going to mitigate the epidemic. Uh, let me give the setup for the paper. You can look at the details. It's right now on archive. So in the paper, we have a society and the society has a principal and a large population of agents. And we want the disease to spread depending on the agents' efforts to slow the spread. For example, they can wear masks, they can do a uh, shop online, and also they can just uh, um, basically um, socialize less in person. In this case, our agents are not cooperating. They are going to be in a game setup. Basically, we are going to approximate the year uh, game with a new field game. On top of this a large number of agents, we have a principle that is going to optimize the incentives by taking into account the niche equilibrium behavior of the agents. In this case, uh, the principal and the population is going to play a Stackelberg game. So before giving the model details, I want to talk about the epidemiology model to give some background information. So here uh, we can start with the susceptible infected recovered model, which is the most widely used epidemiology model. Basically, in this one, we are looking at the system as a whole, and the system state is based on the proportion of people who are susceptible, infected, or recovered. The proportion of susceptible people is uh, going to decrease with the transition rate of beta, which is the meeting rate, and also the proportion of infected people at that time. And from infected to recovered, we have a constant transition rate, which is uh, denoted with gamma. But we want to look at the individuals and how they can affect their transition rates. So let's look at a more individualistic model. Here, basically, we assume that there are N agents, and each agent has different states, such as susceptible, infected, and recovered. In this case, basically, we can uh, model the year transition between states with a continuous time Markov chain. Here you can see the transition rate matrix for an individual, and you can see from susceptible to infected, the transition after an exponentially distributed time with a rate beta, which is the meeting rate, and the proportion of infected uh, people at that time. But at this point, our uh, agents don't have any controls over these transition rates, but we want uh, them to be able to affect these transition rates. In order to do this, we need to include a control that we call contact factor. You can think of this as the year socialization rate, and we denote it with alpha. Here you can see the transition rate matrix for the person J, and uh, its transition from susceptible to infected state uh, depends on its own contact factor alpha j, as well as every other infected person's uh, contact factor alpha j. So at this point, we can uh, uh, now uh, uh, show the representative for the year's model. As I said, we are going to approximate the year game with an extended finite state mean field game. We have an extended model because the interactions uh, are coming through the joint uh, distribution of control and state. And we have finite states because the states are, for example, susceptible, infected, or recovered. In this case, uh, uh, given the incentives of the principal lambda and C, we have uh, the following cost for the representative player. It has a running cost part and a terminal utility part. The interactions with the society is in the running cost uh, part uh, through the joint distribution job, and the interaction with the principal is a uh, in the running cost part and the terminal utility part through the incentives set by the principal. So in this case, the agent state uh, X is going to jump according to the mean field limit of the previously introduced transition rate matrix. And you can see that the interactions uh, of the representative player with the population through the joint distribution also here in the transition rate. So in this case, we uh, can find the system of uh, forward backwards to cause differential equations that characterize the mean field niche equilibrium given uh, the incentives of the principle that you can think of the government. So at this point, we can now uh, include the principle in our model. 
the principal is going to optimize their own objectives, which are different than the agent's uh, objectives. So you can see it's fun here. It uh, again has a running cost part and a terminal cost part. Both parts are related to, uh, has, some, has some terms related to its own controls, lambda and C. And also it is going to get affected uh, by the population through the state uh, distribution of the population. You can think of it as uh, the government going to have some cost uh, for the proportion of infected people at that time. But uh, the principal's problem is not uh, only minimizing this cost, it should uh, also take into account some constraints. The first one is that it should assume that the population is at the midfield Nash equilibrium given the incentives. The second one is that the cost of the representative player should be smaller than a, a preset level kappa, so they shouldn't be too unhappy. So how can we solve this optimization problem? As I was mentioning, we are going to um, propose a numerical approach, but in order to do this, we need to rewrite the principal's problem. So the principal's problem right now you can see here, this is the objective function. And this is the forward backwards stochastic differential equation. So that's a characterize the Nash equilibrium in the agent population. So these are basically the constraints for the principal's problem. We need to do two, two changes in this model. The first one is uh, that we need to change the direction of time in the backward differential equation because we, these uh, forward and backward ones are coupled. And in our numerical approach, we want to discretize time. And we want to solve these coupled uh, equations uh, uh, time over time consecutively. In order to do this, we need to change the direction of the time. The second one is that uh, this is a right now a bi-level problem. Here we have an optimization and uh, at the lower level we have an equilibrium. We need to change this bi-level to one-level problem by uh, basically plugging in the terminal condition of this uh, backward equation in the cost function of the principal you can see that these terms are related and if this u function utility function is invertible we can plug this in here so the last change here is that previously uh, the principal's controls were lambda and c but now c is going to be determined by this expression here and this expression is going to be determined by the initial point chosen for y and the coefficient in front of the randomness so our um, controls right now, before it was lambda and c, but now it's going to be lambda, y0, and z. So for these controls, basically, we are going to approximate functions by using neural networks. This is going to be the machine learning side of our approach. And our final goal is going to be to minimize the discretized version of this cost over the neural network parameters. So our last remark here is that for the, uh, for the main field interactions, we are going to use the empirical distribution of the Monte Carlo simulated. So in the paper, we have uh, some experiments uh, on uh, like different uh, on different scenarios, and we also test our numerical approach against uh, the solutions uh, that we have explicitly. I didn't want to go into too much detail for the sake of time, but I just put uh, one comparison here. Here, basically, we are solving a toy model that we can also explicitly solve and compare the explicit results to our numerical approaches result. You can see the explicit results uh, state distributions here on the left and the numerical or proposed numerical approaches results here on the right, and you can see that it is pretty good at mimicking the explicit behavior. So as a summary, our question was uh, how we can find the optimal incentives for large groups of non-cooperating non agents. And for our approach, we used the Stackelberg mean field game. We introduced a mean field game formulation for the agents, and we introduced the principal's problem. After that, we rewrote the principal's problem to have a vulnerable problem, and we proposed a numerical approach that we use machine learning and Monte Carlo simulation. And for our later work, we at the heterogeneity is true growth on game, but uh, I didn't include it, of course, here in this uh, presentation for the sake of time. So thank you very much for your attention, and please let me know if you have any questions, and you can also send me an email. Thank you very much. Uh, are, are there any questions? Okay, I, I might have one. The, you, you mentioned the fact that you, you are modeling a, a Stackelberg minfield game. As, uh, as we, we, we may have heard in the, the talk yesterday, the uh, difficulty inherent to the time consistency of the, of the, the notion of uh, equilibria. I don't know, can, can you comment a bit on this? Did you, did you observe some, like for instance, the dependence of your, on your numerical solution with the, the time horizon? Can you observe some, mm -hmm. some difficulty yeah, here? 
Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, uh, watch a Jia Ching's uh, uh, talk yesterday. Actually, I'm gonna watch the recording, but uh, in our case, uh, so I don't know uh, the year problem, but in our case, I uh, guess uh, our numerical approach was having a harder time when the time horizon was uh, longer because the learning was harder. Yeah. Okay, thanks. If, if there are no more questions, let's thanks Gotcha once again. Thank you.